Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the 1980 Dario Argento film Inferno. Uh, this was actually the second installment in his Three Mothers film trilogy, I guess, which spanned a lot of time, to be honest. The first one was Suspiria, the second one was this, Inferno, and the third one was Mother of Tears. And the release dates for those were 1977 for Suspiria, 1980 for Inferno, and 2007 for Mother of Tears. So pretty spread out for those. I mean, obviously from uh, 1977 to 1980 was not very far. That was just a three-year span. But then um, 1980 to 2007, a large span of time. So I've not heard many uh, very good things about Mother of Tears. Obviously, people love Suspiria, and there are a lot of people who really like Inferno. Apparently, when Inferno originally came out, this film would, did not do all that well. It was not highly regarded or anything. But over time, it's kind of gained steam. A lot of people have looked at it in a very different light. And it's considered to be one of Argento's masterpieces, apparently. So this is actually my first viewing of it. So I'll let you know what I think. And when this video is being recorded, uh, it's actually streaming on the Shutter streaming service. So awesome. Um, also, Deep Red is on there at the moment. And... To, well, Phenomena and Tenebre were on there, but I think they may have cycled off. Because uh, I actually tried to watch Phenomena, but it's this weird thing where, like, the icon for it is still there, and it shows up as being available, but it's not actually there. Because if you, like, search it, it doesn't come up. But if it was in your uh, save list, it is still there as an icon. So anyway, um, I really like the concept of this trilogy. It's about witches. That's not really a spoiler. Everyone knows that. It's about witches, uh, that, so there's one in each of the films, and they all do tie together because it's the concept of these three witches who kind of rule the world. So uh, it's, it's different, I guess, running in, runnings in with uh, these witches in, throughout these films. And Inferno, I think, does overall a, a, a pretty good job of keeping that going. Um, I will say, though, that I, I think... I think it's like a, a light, it's very light on the actual plot and story in this film, and it relies way more heavily on visuals, as well as kind of like the journey of people kind, try, bleh, kind of trying to figure out what is going on, who is this witch, what is the, you know, wh what's happening here. And it's kind of giallo-ish, because there is kind of like a gloved killer in it. But at the same time, it's not very giallo because the focus is, you know, one of the three mothers. So, like, it's a little giallo-ish, but it's not really technically giallo, I don't think. I don't know how it's, like, technically categorized, but I would not categorize it as actual giallo. It's just got a little bit of it to it. Um, so, much like with a lot of giallo films, the story's kind of light. If, if you just played it straight, just the story, you'd be like, that's not all that interesting. That's not that great. And that's kind of at play here, but the the like I said, the, the great part of it and what holds your interest is the visuals are outstanding and just the journey that people go through, all the investigating that they do, and the settings that they're in is a lot of fun. Uh, Argento has a really good um, feel for keeping interesting things in the film, you know, in either like setting wise or in the background or with lighting, how he does that or you know, just a little kind of like small plot devices. So um, it's always a joy to watch a Argento film from a visual standpoint, but the story typically is a little, you know, it's not like the best <clears throat> when you really think about it. So, uh, but overall movie experience, good. So, uh, do, 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 do. So one of the things I did talk about was the lighting I really love his use of colors, how he plays around with colors. And very early in the film, he uses a lot of pink and blue, actually, as a combination. And it just looks beautiful. It looks amazing. Uh, he uses some red in there. He uses some green in there. Um, just a lot of colors just kind of, like, showing up, which really helps things pop on the screen. And it makes it look very artsy. It, Like I said, it's just visually pleasing. You just can't stop looking at it. It looks outstanding. And that's one of the biggest things, in my opinion, to draw people into watching Argento films, or at least for me personally, is that I, I want to watch it for the visuals. I think it looks beautiful. It holds up in that way. Uh, another thing he did just for, you know, getting things to pop on the screen color-wise is using, like, a red paint for blood. It doesn't look realistic, 
and actually a lot of Italian horror films were doing this. They were using that um, to make like the redness of the blood pop a lot more on the screen. And for that reason, it definitely works. It looks more visually appealing. You can really see it standing out in the environment, but um, it just doesn't hold up from the, from the uh, angle of, does it look like actual blood? It does not. It actually looks kind of like over the top and cartoonish, which honestly, if you just keep in mind the time period and that it was, you know, red paint, then it's fine. Um, yeah, just the lighting is so good. Uh, in addition to the actual color usage that I really like, uh, he has an interesting way of lighting things so that like certain things are in the dark and certain things are in the light and it creates these interesting patterns of light versus dark. Um, once again, just very cool to look at. And, uh, usually with characters, they always have just like this little bit of like a window of light on their face. And then like a lot of the stuff behind them is dark and it just looks cool. It's, it's a very interesting, engaging visual. So I really like the way he plays with light. Uh, there's some fun underwater scenes in this. It's mainly just in the beginning of it, which I really like because you don't see that very much in film, especially not an older film like that. And underwater shot scenes can look very, very cool because of the weightlessness. There's, there's a certain beauty to the way that they, that they play out on screen for that reason, as everything's just kind of like floating. The only thing I didn't like about the underwater portions was that the audio that they put in after the fact of like, you know, kind of like slow movement in water and like bubbles gets a little annoying because it's very repetitive and it's kind of um i don't want to say shrill but it's a little uh grating to your ear and so that kind of bothered me throughout it but but like i said looked really good it's really cool plus just barely anyone's doing that so it's like a fun interesting take on things um Oh, uh, I wrote down that watching this movie nowadays, a lot of the sets actually look like sets. Like, it, it looks like it was a built set for the film. Um, and, and that's just kind of one of the problems with, like, older films in general. When you watch them, 60s, 70s, sometimes even 80s at this point, like, the sets look a little cheap-ish. Like, they look like someone constructed this just for this film, and, yeah, they, they look like sets. But, you know, can't really do much about that. It's a sign of the times, and... A lot of film just doesn't hold up over time because things get better and better and better as we go. And acting is another one, which, you know, that's at play in this film. That's at, at play in a lot of older films that the acting's just not going to be nearly as good because acting as an art form has progressed a ton since the 70s. I mean, a ton since the 80s, a ton since the 90s. Acting, every decade that goes by, acting is at the best it's ever been at, pretty much. Um, the music in this... There are some portions of music that work really well and some portions of music that sound really cool, but I think overall to me, it just kind of was like, it felt all over the place. It, it, it didn't feel cohesive at all. It was just like changing different styles and different sounds. And while that can be fun from a soundtrack aspect and actually like listening to the soundtrack of this film without watching the film would probably be kind of cool. It's when it's put to the film, it feels a little weird. It kind of like messes with pacing and you're just kind of like, this clashes, this is weird. Like it, it's, it feels schizophrenic. It's just like all over the place. And I'm just like, oh, um, Dory talked about the red paint. Uh, okay. So how I was saying that Argento always finds these interesting shots. I'm sure it's not always just Argento. Um, I do have to give some credit, at least in this instance to, Romano Albani, who was the cinematographer for this film. He also did cinematography with a lot of other Italian films. So um, good eye, great shot, um, great shot setup, just really good stuff. And the framing, the camera work and the framing for this film, look, it looks really, really good. Uh, the ambiance is creepy, and it's pretty much creepy the entire way through. There's a lot of darkness used, and like I was saying, when there is light, it's not total light it's just like little pockets of light which maintains creepiness throughout the film um overall the ambience uh, ambiance in this was very awesome they set up a really good environment that keeps things dark it keeps things creepy it keeps you kind of on edge like anything could happen at any time um yeah it's cool uh there's some pretty violent violent death scenes in this uh and some that are pretty gruesome Obviously, the practical effects don't really hold up nowadays, but if you think 1970s, or I'm sorry, 
This was in 1980, but still basically, you just got out of the 70s. So think 1970s as far as the practical effects go, and you'll you'll be more forgiving, you'll understand. But for that time, these were probably very uh, kind of um, cutting-edge, gruesome, violent death scenes, and some of them, I think, are still effective. So um, those were good. Uh, I like the cool little visual touches um, with... Not just the interesting lighting, but also he was doing some cool things where he'll focus on much smaller things. Or like, here's a, a prime example of something that really caught my eye was there's a door being locked at one point. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. There's a door being locked at one point. And instead of showing like the outside lock, like moving, what it did is it was a shot of like a cross section of an actual lock like the internal portion of it, showing it engaging the locking mechanism. And I think that was really cool because it's something that people don't see all that often. It just was super, super interesting. Let me fix this lighting. There we go. It's just super interesting to see stuff like that. It's just a different take on showing you something that's shown in films time and again, but he's saying, you know, yes, you know, this door is locking, but let me show you a different way of getting that through to you. And it's just more interesting because how often do you see the internal mechanisms of a lock, especially in a film? I just like that a lot. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the, the, the story is actually pretty light with this. So a lot of it's in the visuals, a lot of it's in the journey of investigation and discovering what's going on. The set design has a huge uh, thing, has a huge portion of the interest in this film. Um, Okay, let me get to the three main big complaints that I have with this film. One of those big complaints is that it does seem too long. I think it's like an hour and 40-some minutes or something like that. Um, it keeps you engaged, but there are these moments where it's just kind of stretching a little too far with people doing kind of stupid, mundane, uh, uninteresting things. And I think that they really should have shortened a bunch of that to make it move a little bit quicker because there are definitely times where you're like, eh, okay, we're still doing this. Mm, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, and that's just one of the things I, th I think from a horror genre perspective, people are more used to horror films being around like an hour and a half or so. And so when they start going past that, they have to be super, super engaging and super amazing in order for, for people to be more forgiving with that runtime. And this doesn't, fit that mold of being like oh my god it's such an amazing film because like i said the story is so light so for that reason i can't really forgive the length so it should be cut down a little bit uh there are some audio issues with this and that is that uh you know one character will be talking and their audio is totally fine then another character will talk and their audio is way low and you can't even hear them and you can't just keep adjusting because then you're going to have this issue where you can hear the low, the low talking person just fine. And then when the other person talks, it like blasts your eardrums out. So that's one of my other big issues. Audio level, definitely a problem. And then probably one of my bigger things, and, and some people don't have this issue, but some people do. Uh, there's some excessive animal cruelty in the film, which I'm not opposed to having in film the idea of scenes with animal cruelty. But the problem is back in this time, they were using actual animals in the film. Nowadays you can use CGI. And if it's like CGI animal cruelty, no problem. I don't care, that's fine, go ahead and do it. Because for me, it's not the idea of it. For me, it's the idea that, it's the actuality of you used actual animals in this film and you, you know, you may not have killed these animals necessarily, although there is at least one that got killed in, in this film. But um, you can't, uh, you don't necessarily hurt them or kill them. But the problem is they don't want to do this. It's 100% against their will. I mean, do what you want with the actors because they're actually getting paid and they're consenting to being in this film because it can help build their career. They're getting money for it. Like they're actually getting something out of it. But when you have an actual animals involved in film, they are doing it against their will. They're like always doing it against their will. They get nothing out of it and it's solely for the filmmakers and so for that reason i don't condone having animal cruelty or using animals in actual animals in film unless you're just kind of shooting them in, in their natural environment or shooting them doing things that they like you know like there were some scenes kind of early on in the film where there's some cats hanging out 
in an alleyway and you could tell that they had just kind of given them something to eat so they were just kind of like hanging out in specific spots and just like licking the floor that's fine that that's totally fine because they're getting something out of it you know the cats are eating cats love to eat you know so something like that's fine just bringing them in sitting them down and giving them something to eat not a problem but there's there's some portions where they're they're like throwing cats and there's other stuff too but it's just I have a problem with that, and that's my reasoning for it. I know there are some people, the usual argument is it's a depiction of cruelty to animals, and that makes me offended. That's not me. Like I said, if it's like CGI or it's practical effects animals and it's cruelty, fine, especially if it's part of the film. But with this film, um, it, it, it's actual animals, and it's not part, of, like, it doesn't have to be part of the film. There's not a real reason to have it, oh, there's a net, a real reason to have it in the film. Because um, it didn't play, like, a real legitimate part. It actually kind of seemed out of place, in my opinion. I was just like, I don't get this. So, anyway, but the, those are my big issues with the film. Um, but overall, I mean, I think I enjoyed it. Like I said, once again, I've said it numerous times now, the story is light. Uh, but I do like the idea, once again, of these three films that kind of have this shared universe, in a sense. And not many people do witch movies. Haven't, you know, over decades, not many people have done witch movies. Pretty much no one's doing them now. There are a few here and there. But, um, okay, so anyway, my star rating out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a three and a half. Um, yeah, I like it, uh, mainly for the visuals. But, um, yeah, and, and I would recommend it to people if they want to check it out. But, you know, just be warned about the animal cruelty thing because I know that is a big trigger point for a lot of people. So, anyway, thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Um, please hit that subscribe. It can really help me out a lot. And it literally takes you about a second. It is painless, but it can do a lot for me, and I appreciate that. That's the way you show me that you like what I'm doing or like even one video that I did. Uh, put some comments down there. What are your thoughts on Inferno? And if you haven't seen it, are you going to check it out now? And then you can give likes. If you want to do that, you don't have to. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.